Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. This video is the follow-up video, basically my review and my afterthoughts of the Abacus by Unquiet Hands. Now first of all, if you happen to be wondering, hey, I didn't see an unboxing or impressions video here on this channel. That's because I actually did a live stream of the unboxing and the first impressions over on Facebook at the Unquiet Hands Facebook group. I'll put a link to that video in the description box down below so that you can check it out if you want to. But basically, from then till now, it's been quite a while. I would say maybe possibly a couple of months. I don't even know when this video is going to be released because, you know, I actually have quite a lot of backlog. So I think by the time you actually see this, it might, might, might possibly be a couple of months since that video. So, just to let you guys know, this here is the fine stone wash titanium version of the Abacus by Unquiet Hands. And I gotta say once again, a big shout out and a big thank you to Tom Lynette because without him, I wouldn't have this in hand to show you guys. Now, I've been using this very, very often. I mean, yes, I do admit halfway, I started using other spinners because I wanted to kind of compare how this really feels versus other spinners. And the main reason is because I kept thinking to myself, how well can you design a square? See, it's it's basically a square, right? It's just, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just amazing to me. Like, to make a square be so vegetable is actually pretty darn awesome, in my opinion at least. Because I've said this before and my first impressions on this has still not changed. The fact that this square is so well-rounded, it's got very minute, very gentle curves on each side of the square and each corner is basically rounded till it's no longer sharp at all. It's not even resemblant of a sharp corner. And then all these sides here, Everything along the edges have all been very nicely rounded. Now, I'm not even going to use the word chamfered because there's no chamfering. It's just completely rounded. But what I do really like is the fact that this curve actually stops at this flat area here. That's something really interesting and makes this very nice to feel. Now, I do have to admit though that I've used this so much that I actually dropped it. So, sorry Tom, but you can see some... <laughs> some battle scars here in this corner and of all ways to drop it I dropped it right smack on one particular corner and so that is why it's got some scuffs here I did try to kind of buff it out but you know I didn't want to remove too much material so I kept that to a very very minimum I might put this into my stone washing rig so I could kind of remove that a little bit more because yeah um you know it was really really in pristine condition when tom sent it to me so sorry tom i mean i really used it so that's the reason why okay that's the reason why next thing you guys who have been avid followers of my channel would have noticed that i showed this off to hong fu now he wasn't the only person that i showed this off to i actually let william try this out as well mr william lee and well so far everyone's feedback is that this has been pretty darn good now i do admit that i did not change the bearings out and it is getting a little bit gritty but that's where the beauty of this is i actually enjoy this a lot more when the bearing is really gritty like I'm just enjoying the feedback that it gets because it's just a square right but when I give it that pull it's like how should I say this it's like two levels of satisfaction first satisfaction is when I get a strong nice pull it just feels great and then that grittiness of the bearing I don't know if you guys can hear it but that grittiness of the bearing is not just heard but it's also felt and I really enjoyed that in this spinner more so than any other spinner possibly because it's just spinning so smooth you know it's kind of like a quad spinner or a cork style spinner this is a square it's not like a tri or a bar where you actually feel the arms moving around you don't get so much of the torque this is just absolutely smooth and with that feedback it just makes it a completely different but yet so enjoyable experience now since you guys know about my first impressions and since i'm talking about the spin quality now i'm gonna say that i've not found this difficult to fidget with at all so fidget factor is actually pretty good surprisingly despite it being a square so going back to the very first question that i asked myself how well can you design a square just a square that is easily fidgetable like this is quite awesome you could jib jab you know uh and to a certain extent it feels like you're just rolling your finger across rather than flicking and it's just such a different experience altogether fidgeting with your middle finger pulling backs push forward you know uh with your fourth finger as well it's just really comfortable and this thing doubles up as a worry stone or a worry coin because you can actually hold the spinner just the way tom mentioned you could hold the spinner in the palm of your hand and then just 
use your thumb and twiddle with the buttons and they feel really good because we all know these echo buttons are just just amazing now these are the 25 millimeter echo buttons i'm still waiting and hoping that tom would actually release a 23 millimeter echo button for sale or maybe even the sage buttons for sale because i want to buy more of those these buttons that unquiet hands puts out i mean it's just really really awesome stuff so it's very well designed all the way down to the buttons and i'm actually really glad for this button design because it does add a little bit of flair to the overall design because if not it would be i think a little bit too plain but now that it's got this area here with the concentric circles and differences in that height you see that i think it's very very nice because you've got a nice flat here then you've got a lip and a kind of a dish downward yeah kind of like a concave downward and then you got this donut shape coming up here and then a flat spot right in the middle this whole thing actually feels just pretty <laughs> pretty good so it works really well as a worry stone it works really well as a worry coin it works really well as a spinner and basically that is it i don't really have much negative to say about this at all this is really simplistic very sleek very stylish now if there's one point i could add like just one point for improvement would have to be and i'm gonna say that this is not coming from me it's because other people have mentioned it it would be to add speed holes also known as lightning holes to this area here the inner lip area because right now you can see it's a solid piece now don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with it the way it is right now but like i said if i were to have a point that i could share for improvement and i'm just really digging for this point when i say improvement for me personally what it means is that you actually feel more of the weight being thrown outwards because right now yes i'm enjoying the spin feedback but to make it a little bit more exaggerated if you have lightning holes around here or speed holes around here basically you would be throwing the weight outwards and that would cause the inertia to go outwards where i believe you'd get a completely different feedback altogether when you're spinning this thing especially right now in terms of the torque that you're getting from this you don't actually feel much of that resistance compared to say for example a tri spinner and then you kind of talk it left and right you actually feel that sense of how should i say this that resistance like as if your hand was in water and there's a really strong current you get that kind of feel um this one you don't really get that feel much but i believe that if you have those lightning holes in there it might might make that feeling a little bit more obvious so that's just me fishing for something i could share in terms of improving this because really i think this simplistic design doesn't really need anything else maybe for those of you with access to say for example a laser uh, engraver machine yeah maybe you could laser some awesome designs here on the top or maybe on the sides or you could also seracote it i know that probably tom would send some of these over to fly away toys and get Alison miles to do her magic to this you know like because she's currently in my opinion the queen of seracoting you know so yeah just add a bit of pizzazz and a little bit more flair to this seemingly very simple looking spinner now like i said it looks simple but really it's just something else to behold you have to try it in order for you to understand like i can't really say anything much else apart from that so for those of you who missed it here's a really quick size comparison before i tell you a little bit more about the pricing details and the weight and everything of the spinner there we go this is the size comparison of the abacus against a stubby and this is what it looks like on top of a stubby yeah almost basically the same width in fact a little bit wider or like taller wider i should say than the width of the stubby but yep, so just before I wrap up this video, I want to tell you guys about the variants of the Abacus that are offered. It is offered, well, at the point of time, you know, uh, was stainless steel, copper and titanium. And there was a one time, I think, a limited drop of the Abacus in Mokume. Well, I gotta say that the Mokume Abacus is just a work of art. I mean, okay, shout outs to Anthony Kova. Because Kova, man, you really have this insane skill for taking beautiful pictures of spinners. I, I gotta I gotta tip my hat to you, Anthony. Those pictures of all of your exotic metal spinners are just crazy. And when I saw the pictures of your Mokume Abacus, man, you cannot imagine the amount of jealousy that was welling up in my heart i would love to own one but you know really i can't handle patina so just so you guys know the mokume abacus was on sale for 250 dollars, and i believe that it was a pre-order run i may be wrong the etching on that is really well done by the way kudos to tom and well needless to say all of us know that Tom's finishing work is really top notch, really possibly the best in the game. So yes, going back to the topic, it is about the price and materials now. Stainless steel, yes, it is offered in stainless steel and stainless steel weighs around 93 grams with these echo buttons on it as well. And they range between 75 to $80 and that's because 
there's a price difference depending on the kind of finish that you choose. Now moving on to copper, copper is coming in at about 105 grams with the buttons and it is being sold at 75 to 80 dollars and last but not least we have titanium as one of the standard base metals that are offered and it is weighing in at 55 grams but I gotta say that even though this is in titanium it does not feel like 55 grams. I gotta say that it feels a lot more heftier than 55 grams even though I know it's 55 grams. It could be a placebo, I don't know. Like for example this is a stainless steel stubby and this actually feels almost the same weight as this abacus over here. So titanium weighing in at 55 grams and on sale in between 90 to 95 dollars which in my opinion is a fair price. I mean just look at the amount of material like you saw guys under the buttons it's just solid all the way. You got some awesome buttons and you got this square shaped thing that has been machined so well and the time it takes for Tom and his beautiful wife to go through each and every piece just to make sure that the QC passes their stringent standards and the finishing man. So look at that. It just looks reflective, man. I, I, do, I don't know what to say. Like I've never been able to get such a fine stone wash finish on any of my spinners. Even by using fine medium on my own stone washing rig, man, Tom, kudos to you. This is just awesome. And basically, that is it. So my verdict for this, should I bring out the fox again to give you guys a fox system? You know what? I should. So how many fox am I giving to the abacus? I've got three fox in my hand to give and I give it all three fucks like this is the first time i'm giving a spinner three fucks design is subjective but i gotta say that this is really a wonderful way of actually designing a square or redesigning a square i never expected this to feel so good i never expected the thought put in to all these nuances here i'm really honestly pleasantly surprised at this i honestly did not think that this was going to be anything good like i thought man it's just a square you know but to actually handle it now it's one of those spinners that it just it looks good it's easily identifiable like there's no other spinner in the market that looks like it the button combination the thought put into it all these nuances and everything just it's just a winner you know and unquiet hands has been putting out winner after winner after winner i would say compared to the other spinners that unquiet hands has released it is possibly the most minimalistic spinner i mean of course yes guys the sage was also quite minimalistic but this is just basically a square and it's how well you can design a square and what kind of innovations and nuances you can put into a square to make it really wonderful and this is it i tip my hat off to you tom you really I don't know how you've done it. I don't know what kind of sorcery this is, but yes. And guys, mind you, this is unbiased. It's not because I have a good relationship with Tom. Let's be honest here. Everyone has a good relationship with Tom. He's well known in the spinner community as the best maker in the game. And this is not one of those claims with no backing. All right, so if you guys really understand where I'm coming from, you know, this is not biased at all. I'm really surprised at this as well. So good job, Tom. Thank you so much for this gift once again, Tom. I really appreciate it. And I really thank you for all the support you've been showing my channel. And you know, I am going to support you for as long as I can as well. And I'm really looking forward to what you have up your sleeve next because, dude, if you can make a square like this, I'm, I don't know what you can do with any other shape, man. So that's it, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking all the way throughout and sharing in this slice of my life. And I hope that I provided enough information to help you decide whether or not the abacus is a spinner for you once again links in the description box down below and if you like the content that i'm putting out please consider subscribing to the channel it would really mean a lot because you know youtube is taking another big hit due to the copper thing all the other drama so yep a like a subscribe would really really help a lot and if you do subscribe make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified of any new uploads that i put out also i run a patreon page i'll put a link up here to that if you want to check it out and if you do become a patron of mine thank you so much in advance and basically we've come to the end of the video once again Shout out to Tom for sending this to me. I really, really appreciate it. And I will catch all of you in the next slice of my life. Until then, everyone, gaga, boost.